Okay, I just got done washing the tub, and the tub is in very, very good condition. I'm going to just end up reusing the tub. The only problem that's on this tub, and you got to really f look for it, is that there's one chip right there, which was there previous to me doing the construction. So I got one ceramic trip chip repair to do. Actually, there's a second one back there that's hardly even noticeable. I did notice it somewhere back there. That might be it right there. I'll do those two uh, chips while I'm at this job. <clears throat> okay, so the decision of keeping the tub is there. Oh, on the floor, I just uh, put the subflooring over that for now just to, just to kind of get it out of the way. I marked where I'm going to be uh, drilling a hole for the um, uh, drain for the toilet right there so I know where to cut when I get ready for that. Okay, so uh, next step from this project is is to figure out what I'm going to do with this shower. So my intention with this shower is to, the shower surround, is to tile it and I would like to build a niche. So then I'm deciding, okay, where do I want to put the niche? And I decided to put the niche on this wall right here because I've got two studs exactly 16 inches on center so a niche will fit uh, I'm just going to do a prefab niche right in there and it'll fit really good I just have to take this copper water line route it through here come up route it back and then come up there yeah that option's not really a great option if I was to pull out this 2x4 here and go from this 4x4 to this 2x4 that distance would be 13 and 3 quarters and I believe I need 14 and a quarter on the pre-made stud. Like this here, is that a 16 inch on center? That's a 16 inch on center. Inside to inside is about 14 and a half. So I think I, I have to check the specs on that but I think I need at least 14 and a quarter to fit the niche and in this one, this cavity here I only have 13 and 3 quarter and in this cavity here actually it's even tighter it's only 13 so it's not uh, this whole thing's not 100% symmetrical for some reason they, they put a 4x4 four four in there and I definitely don't want to disturb that 4x4 four four. and I don't want to disturb too many 2x4's like I said my easiest wall is going to be this one right here to put the shower niche. The only thing that I need to do is I need to take this one pipe this, which goes to the to the um, to the spout for the water coming out which is too low anyways. I mean the thing is super ridiculous low. I just have to take this and, and reroute that up around and determine exactly what height I want that at up at the top and then um, I don't know I might bring this up to here. I'm not sure yet. And then I also got to choose what tile to do for the uh, for the so I gotta go tile shopping now and figure out what tile I want to put in here but my next step in this bathroom project is to determine what tile I want to use and then start getting the cement backer board uh, on this back wall that's it All right, before I go tile shopping there's two things I want to do to this tub because I want it to look as new as possible I want to replace this trim and that. So with this one down here, that would be the, probably the more challenging one. I want to use this tool here and just take these teeth, put them in there, and then just use a screwdriver to unscrew it. Um, let's make sure this one's not frozen. Oh, that one, that one's a piece of that one's a piece of cake. All right, so that one there is a slam dunk. The only issue is, see how big that is. Uh, I might have to clean that up a little bit with the replacement. Uh, you know what? I got the wrong replacement one here. This one here is a is a two screw model, and I need a single screw model and maybe a little bit bigger. So I'll take this plate, try to match it up to the uh, to get the same exact size, brand new. All right. So, anyways, that's that one. Next, let's try to see if this will come out, because if that's going to be a problem, that could be a big problem. So let's see if I can do it. All right, put a screwdriver in there. All right, it's actually coming out pretty good. screw 
that. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Are you there yet? There you are. Okay. All right, that wasn't so bad. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take clean off this area, clean off this uh, plumber's putty, <coughs> get a new one of these, get some <coughs> some new plumber's putty, <coughs> put that on and then put this uh, all together, make sure it's nice and a uh, good tight seal. <coughs> Just gonna make sure that that thread pattern matches up exactly with the one that I buy. And uh, that's it. So I just want to kind of show you that. A couple things I want to do to, just to kind of get this a little better. Okay, I got this package here at the Home Depot. Uh, black Schedule 40 ABS Twist and Close Plumber's Pack Chrome Trim. One and a half inch. All right. So it should work perfectly good with what I got going on. Let me... Uh, Unbox it here. And, okay. and it comes with all the fittings, but I'm not going to go and move the tub. So those fittings I actually don't need. I actually just wanted these two fittings here. And let's start with this one here, which is the one for the drain. Alright. So it comes with this uh, twist and drop thing there that's pretty cool. And it comes with a uh, rubber gasket here and the way that they want me to, uh, to do it here, hold on a second alright so underneath it must look like this here so what I'm going to do I don't know if I can get that old gasket out oh you know what I do need to Right, I do need to take this out here. I'm going to need to get a Phillips head screwdriver. Let me go get one of those. Okay, so on this deal here, when you uh, lift it up, there's a set screw there. I loosened that set screw up so I could take this up all the way. And then you still can't get your cross in there because of this this just unscrews. So once you unscrew that, then you'll be able to get your cross in there in order to tighten it up. Now, I'm just going to set that aside for the moment. Now, this one came with a brand new gasket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach in here and I'm going to pull out this gasket like so. If I can. It's kind of fighting me. There it is. All right, it's definitely a size difference between the two two gaskets here. This old one here is much thicker, and it is a little bit of a different diameter too. Uh, it's a little bit stiffer. <clears throat> you know, I'm, now I'm debating. Let me see if I can clean this up a little bit. I might just end up reusing this old gasket only because, let me see here. See that one looks like that on that one. This one looks like that. You know, the new one's probably going to be fine. I'll just go with the new one. It is thick. It does have a thickness difference though, I must admit. The, uh, this one is a lot thicker. You know, I think I will need that thickness. There's a gap there where it looks like this is going to have to suck it up just a little bit too much. I'm going to clean this one up. Okay, I just took a greeny pad and I just cleaned it up pretty good. 
and I'm just going to go ahead and reuse it and I can just live with that. Let me see if I can now get it back in there after removing it. Just trying to massage it in. Luck, it's not broken, it still appears to be in good condition. I just got to try to massage it in the hole and I did. Okay, so now that's good. All right, next, let me just get myself a, a towel here. All right, next is, um, I want to put this in right there. Now, before I go and put that in, I need to get some plumber's putty, so I'm just going to use some of this plumber's putty right here. And get myself a small amount and kind of roll it into a, I don't know, a large, uh, I mean, let me just clean this up around here real quick. I, really, I went through the tub and cleaned it up real well, it's just some extra dust because I removed some insulation. And then I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to take my fresh plumber's putty here, and just roll that right in. It's going to ooze out of there anyways. Overlap the two joints, so it's a good liberal, liberal amount for sure. Find that center, and then take this tool, put that in there, All right. and then make sure that you don't cross thread. Screw down slowly, bringing that whole thing together. Okay. Almost hand tight. You can see how that plumber's putty uses out all the way around, so I know I got a good seal all the way around. Okay, right there. <clears throat> that should be a really good seal. On that and that certainly dressed this up from replacing that uh, the old one that was on there see I don't even have it right here I took it out of the bathroom I can't even show you the comparison there all right so that's good use the uh, plumbers putty to kind of clean up this uh, section here <clears throat> Okay, that looks fine. Next, I'm going to screw this in, making sure I don't drop it down. Screw that in all the way. Next, I'm going to take this, and this is the one where you take the Phillips head screwdriver. So you put that in, get your Phillips head screwdriver there, hold on, right there. And hold on, let that drop in. Yeah, just a little hard to find that. There we go. I think I got it now. You have to do it at a little bit of an angle. There it is. Alright, so I can drop it like that, or it'll stay up like that when you're taking a shower. There's a little bit of a gap there, so that's perfectly fine. I'll drop it down like that so I don't get any you know, garbage like this down there so I can uh, clean that up and uh, shop vac that up. There we go, I already installed it. It's just basically a Phillips head screwdriver right here. Make sure that the, uh, the opening is facing down and then just screw that on hand tight, not too tight that you crack anything. And then there you go, brand new trim on the tub that, that'll dress that up really, really nice. So now we got new trim um, both the uh, top and bottom. All right, so a couple things that I didn't mention about the tub. So I cleaned the tub up. The tub looks really good, and I've never moved it or anything like that. But when you install a tub, you should be checking for level, and the tub should be installed level. This 
And you should be checking it a couple different ways. You should be checking your pitch going this way and this way. And in the, the, the way the tub is designed, it should drain down and it should be installed on a level substrate. This particular substrate, at least in front, when I take the level, I can see that this tub, that the substrate here, actually pitches down this way. Like this is a low spot right here, which is going towards the drain, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, but it is a bad thing in one section, and I'll show you what that is. So, let's see if I can't... Hang on just a second. Let me just show you what that bubble looks like. Uh, this camera does a pretty good job of zooming in. Alright, so you can see the bubble's not like perfect, perfect. Pretty damn close, just not perfect, perfect. And <coughs> what the issue is, is that the tub pitches this way a little bit because the substrate pitches that way. So, I'm, and I'm not going to pool any water in this area here. Going this way, it's pretty level. Um, what's going to happen is, if anything, it's going to pool in this section over here. So what I did was, is I just took some water like this, scooped it up, and I just kind of poured it out here just to kind of get a test to see what was going to happen. And pretty much it does drain out pretty good. But if anything, there would be a little bit of a pooling right here, but it's not that bad. If, if I try to take this tub out and re-level it, I know I'm going to break this tub because it's, it feels like it's kind of cemented in. So it, it's off by a little bit, but I can live with it. It's, it's close enough, in other words. So I just wanted to show you that. Okay. Alright, so this room here is kind of my staging area. There's the 12 by 24 inch tile there. I got a brand new toilet. Uh, just a very simple $100 Glacier Bay elongated toilet there. Uh, inside here is a medicine cabinet. That's a three-tier medicine cabinet glass, so it'll go up against the back wall. This here is the accent tile. Uh, right here so this one has a bull nosed edge to it so uh, when it, when the tile comes out I'll show you on the uh, on the tub just come over here real quick so when the top when I do the tile which is going to be uh, a full tile here and then a cut tile I'm gonna have this come out so it's approximately like this uh, about you know whatever that distance is three inches right there and then uh, you'll have the bull nose edge come out so I got it I'm, I'm working with that one there uh, what else oh all right so on my design which is right here and then this wall here is the wall that's gonna go right here by the way I'm gonna have a niche that's right in here I gotta put I didn't put it in the drawing uh, I started to actually uh, mark out exactly how I'm going to do this. So uh, the top of the niche is right on this wall. This is the wet wall. This is a different size niche. This is a taller niche. There's going to be the top of the niches there. Then I'm going to have a border that's four inches that goes, it's going to go halfway in the middle of the niche. And the other niche on the other wall is the exact same height as this one, so that'll come out matching. <clears throat> the uh, and then the bottom of this wet wall niche is going to be right to that point right there so I need to absolutely take this copper pipe because the niche if you follow with my level if I bring a level line it's going to go from here 26 inches down it's 26 inch by 16 inch and so this pipe here I know that this here is the bottom of the niche this here is the top of the niche so I need to take this copper pipe, I have to bring it through here, come up, and then come through. I've marked on my stud exactly where I'm going to do it. Right there and right there. Uh, and then I'm going to land this right where this piece of tape is right about there. Um, I am going to take the tile up all the way, so I do have to cut out my drywall. Now, when it comes to cutting out the drywall, you see that this uh, on these two studs there, I'm going to come out right about like that well 
Okay, so that means that this is going to come up like this, and this is going to go up all the way to the wall. But I, I want to remove uh, this drywall so I can put in a cement board here. The question is, is where do you cut, where do you make your demarcation point from drywall to, um, I'm using a Wonderboard light. Okay. <clears throat> oh, that's another thing on the, uh, I'll explain that in a minute. So if I know that this tile is going to go here, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to cut this drywall so it's about in the middle. So my demarcation point will be in the center of this tile here. So this way the, I want it to come out and meet uh, these two. So that seam will be behind this tile. So I'm going to plan out the drywall installation like that. All right, so what I'm using is I'm using the the building procedures by Custom Building Products, and their website yeah, is I don't know that. Their website is custombuildingproducts.com, and the reason why I'm going with them is because they offer the homeowner me a lifetime warranty if it's installed with these steps. So I'm following their installation recommendation on how to do it and then here's their their warranty and everything like that so the most important thing to me is that it's uh, not gonna leak okay so that is why I'm installing it that particular way because I don't want uh, my shower to leak the most important thing is that it looks really good and it doesn't leak uh, so and I, and since this one this particular one comes with a warranty, I'm going to go with that. The interesting thing is is that you know I'm just a DIYer. I'm not a professional bathroom remodeler. So um, as trying to learn how to be a DIYer and do this job and do a good job, you go out there and you get your research and get your information. But there's so much disinformation out there on the internet. Sometimes you need to distinguish what's good information and what's bad information. I decided that this information is good information because they're coming, they're backing it up with the warranty. So I'm going to install it according to their installation instructions. So that's how I plan on building this and I'll show you that step by step. Some of the other tools that I have to help me with this project is this. I've got the uh, Stanley Complete Bathroom Book. That is a pretty good resource. I also have this book here, which is just the Home Improvement 123 by the Home Depot. Uh, not a bad book as well. <clears throat> so between all of these three sources, with the uh, custom building products being the, the, the primary sources on how to do the construction. All right, so I'm prepping the wall for where I want my transition and drywall to go. So there's the tile. I added this piece of wood here and I repositioned this one. This one was set way, way back. So I brought that out flush so it was flush with this stud and this stud using a level like this and then making sure that that was as, as tight as I could get it, you know, going like that with it against the wood like that. Uh, so, and then following that, I added this piece of wood here and then there was nothing to attach to up there so I'm going to use the drywall itself and and then there's my cut line where I'm going to cut so this this whole piece is coming out up to the ceiling this whole piece is coming out up to the ceiling this whole piece now on this one on this side uh, on this one this particular stud here is it's a little bit shallow but it's it's okay I'm just I'm going to deal with it and that's the stud that I'm going to use because the other stud that's next to it this stud here is just for the door frame. It probably stops right there. Uh, I guess I could do a sister stud there. You know what? Now that I think of it, I could just do a sister stud onto that, onto this stud right there and add that. Let me give me one second. All right, so this is on the other side of the tub. So I'm going to uh, use this stud here as the demarcation point with the wonderboard light and the drywall and then that will be right behind that tile and then following this stud up i'm going to cut the drywall on this line here and then remove everything on this side to the ceiling corner over there all that's coming out i'll probably have to add a sister stud i got a feeling there's nothing up right there no big deal uh i know this stud goes all the way up because i can feel it 
going out and I can see it. Okay, so that's it. All right, all the drywall's been pulled out where I wanted it to pull out. There was actually already a stud. That stud uh, actually did continue all the way up. I didn't need to add a sister stud there, which worked out good for me. Um, anyways, now that I think of it, even adding a sister stud would be real hard there. Anyways, I got that nice and clean all the way around, and I started working on my plumbing, and I got the, uh, so I got it coming out. I know that the niche is going to be between there and there, so I know all I had to do was just go around that. Everything's working out fine, so I got every, all the pieces dry fit. I'm going to sweat them in in a second. One thing uh, before I sweat it in, this thing here is the original and they and one of the um, aluminum rivets broke off it was like that before but I'm just going to drill that out resecure that with a new aluminum rivet another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to notch out this 2x4 here and on this side so this way this sits when this is uh, landed this will be flush so I'm going to do that too so I'm working on that right okay so I've got all of the pieces for the um, plumbing dry fitted and uh, I haven't started sweating yet. Uh, I just wanted to point out. So what I do is I take some um, sheet metal, which is just like this stuff, just some just some plain old sheet metal. Cut some scrap pieces there. Put it in back of the wall. I got this um, fireproof uh, blanket here. I don't know. And then I just kind of clamp that there. So this way, when I solder the joints that are close to the wood and the drywall. I'm going to try to protect myself. Uh, this joint here should be a piece of cake because it's plenty of room. That's kind of tight. And then there's that joint and that joint. So anyway, I'm working on that right now. Alright. Alright, the soldering joints are all done. It came out pretty good. Didn't burn down the house. Didn't even really scorch anything because I had everything so well protected. Um, now, since my four joints are done, what I need to do is I need to put a half inch cap, a plug rather, on that fitting and I need to put a half inch cap on that fitting right there so I can pressurize this uh, system and check for leaks before the wall gets buttoned up. So if there's a leak I want to fix it now. I don't have those items so I gotta acquire those at the supply store. I've already got this thing here notched out. That came out really good so that's nice and flush there. It's really nice and flush there. I put that ex uh, that brand new, um, um, uh, what do you call it there? I'm, uh, I'm losing my mind now. Uh, that fitting right there, whatever it's called. Um, anyways, that's done. All right, that's it for now. All right, I got the camera in the back of the bathroom I'm trying to show you as much as possible here. I um, redid the valve and got it in the position that I wanted it to do, kind of retouch these pipes. And I'm getting ready to do a water test here. So what I did was, is I took my bucket here, just put it underneath the, uh, the uh, top spout, opened up the valve, give, it a, give, it, give the uh, copper a good flush so everything's flushed out there. Now I'm going to want to do a pressure test to see how this thing does under pressure. So I got my cap with uh, Teflon tape. Let me get that on. And let me uh, get a couple of wrenches here. And I'm just using a double wrench technique. I'm just going to uh, go ahead and cinch up this cap. Okay. Now I'm going to do a pressure test. Okay, now I'm looking for leaks and I'm testing the joints while the, everything is exposed so that I can see if I've got a problem. Now let me see if I can. Alright, so I got water. Uh, this is your cold water line here. This is your hot water line. This is for the tub. I've got a cap on that so nothing will come down. You can see here that the valve is open. If the valve is in the closed position, this would be all the way up like so. But I got it open because I want to do a pressure test. Okay, so the joints that I touched are going to be this joint here. And is that a seeper right there? Or is that just an overflow from when I, when I did that? All right, let's just get this nice and 
clean here. Let's see if I've got anything going on right there. Anyways, I'm going to be real, you know, I'm going to leave this on while I'm working here for a little while. And that way I can test it in a half an hour, see if anything comes up. I, because I dripped some water out of here, I just want to make sure these are nice and dry. Uh, that was another joint that I did because uh, my niche is going to go. I had to box out to get my niche in there and I just, like I said, my walls are exposed. Now's the time to test it. Another thing that I did was I determined exactly where I wanted the valve on the depth and um, measuring out the plate. I know that uh, from the stud I'm going to have about a half of an inch of wonderboard. The tile is three-eighths of an inch. Then the uh, float that I'm going to use is a half of an inch. So then I took the uh, tape measure here to determine exactly how much distance I have. And my tile is going to run right in between there. So uh, I have uh, I can go all the way up to, oh, I don't know, about two inches. And all I need is an inch and three-eighths. So, hold on a second, let me see if I can get you a better angle there. So you can see that I can I can go to just about two inches and still be okay. But all I need is an inch and three-eighths, so this thing's going to go back uh, right about there after everything is said and done. And uh, so I'll be perfectly fine. And this is nice and anchored really well. Got a nice two-by-four anchored in there, so that's looking really good. Oh, and one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put plates here to, so that there's no penetration on these copper pipes. So I'm going to put plates here, here, and there's one electrical line that was a little tight that I wanted to protect. I think it was this one from memory. Yeah, that's the most shallowest one. I think everything else is fine. Uh, I don't think... Uh, now that I'm looking at it, uh, this one here, but like I'm only going to use an inch and a quarter... Uh, and this goes back, uh, yeah, I'm going to be fine on that one, because I'm just going to use an inch and a quarter, except for back here, and I'll get into that in a second. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do my best to try to show you what I'm trying to accomplish. Um, the next step is to put on the uh, Wonderboard light, and I want to try to make sure my studs are super straight, <clears throat> so I can have a nice level surface to accomplish that with. So I got a nice straight edge here. Taking my, if I had a six foot level, it'd be ideal, but taking my four foot level going up like that and um, just verifying that it's tight. This side was a little bit better, so I put an L with an arrow on it. Then I took, and I cut this so it's the same length, just like a half an inch short of the distance from here to there. And then I just started at the bottom and I put it up against the surface and then I'm just kind of going up like this. And everything, um, I, had, I had a high spot here, so I used this scraper here because I don't have a planer, and I scraped that down to take out that high spot. And I kept moving it through like this, and I'm watching the, uh, the work as I go. And then what's happening is, is right, right about here, uh, I'm beginning to lose this wall right here. So I'm just going to make a make a mark right there. About right there. And then I'm going to keep moving it up. See how we're doing here. I can deal with some tolerances, but once the tolerances get too great, uh, like over an eighth of an inch, then that's a little bit much. Then I come up here, and right about here, I begin to lose this one. I'm going to make a mark right there. Alright. <clears throat> and then as I keep going up, I can see uh, the gap right there is about maybe almost three quarters of an inch. And the gap here is about three sixteenths. I don't think it's quite a quarter, but it looks like it might be about three sixteenths. And I am pretty good. Actually, this one here is a little bit of a gap on this stud right here. Uh, let me just see that. And I don't really want to bring this down anymore because uh, I got a top metal plate up here 
and I got a big stud. This is a, this four by four is support. Maybe this is bigger than four by four. I don't know. I mean, I see this much here. I know that I'm supporting a big ass beam right here. So I don't want to disturb any of that. I just want to leave that. So I want to try to make my wall straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sister stud onto here to where I made that mark right there. I'm going to cut a two by four from there to there. And I'm going to sister stud that out to it's a nice straight line. And then I'm going to do the same thing here where I began to lose it. This one's a lot shorter. Uh, this one here uh, only needs to be uh, just from here to there. Uh, and what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to, uh, let's see, what am I going to do? I could do the same thing. I could sister stud this one too. This one here begins to lose it right about there. So I could and By the way, the water valve is open right there. You can see it open. And all my joints are good, so I've, as I've been working on the wall, I'm just leaving this all pressurized. So that's just a good way to confirm that no leaks and everything's going to be nice and pressure tested prior to buttoning up the wall. Okay. Okay, so as I'm working here by myself, I got this board, I got this one set so it's straight in line with, these, with this stud, these two, this one, and that one. Now I want to get the top, so the top is not anchored right there. So what I'm going to do is take my clamps that I have here, and it's like an extra helping hand that I can use. When you're working by yourself, you got to try to use whatever you can to try to get your stuff in order here. Let me try to get this board level. All right, now I'm up against this, I'm up against this, and now I'm going to bring this so that it's just meeting this board, and then I'm going to send it home and get it in there. I've already started a screw hole there, and I've got my drill right here, so I can start this. Clamp is a little bit in my way. I should have uh, done a hole a little bit lower. Let me just do this to make my life easier. What I'll do is I'll get one down here. Right. I'm just using two and a half inch screws, so I'm just going to go ahead and start this. Okay, now while that's started, now make sure that I'm up against my wood where I want it to be. Everything should be okay. Still a gap here, but that's okay. I'm going to bring this out so it meets this straight edge. Level line is correct. Checking everything. And then send that in. Uh, let me make sure that's in good. Okay, there we go. Now that that's in, let me verify that I did that correctly. And yeah, that is good. That is right up against it right there. And you know what? When I brought that in, it brought it in ever so slightly. It's not bad. I mean, I'm kind of I'm nitpicking, really. It's fine. I'm just nitpicking myself. All right, so. Basically, this is the procedure. I'm going to keep putting some sister studs in there, but I just want to kind of show you how I'm doing it. Uh, okay, so what I was going to do was I was going to sister stud right here to bring this out slightly, but when I was trying to do it, it, it truly wasn't coming out exactly the way I wanted to. So instead of doing a sister stud there, I'm going to use this product, which is called drywall shims. It's basically just cardboard. <clears throat> it's got about a thickness of a sixteenth. Two of them together is a thickness of an eighth of an inch. <coughs> so what I'm doing is I, uh, I brought the board up to where I needed uh, one. So two of them here is, that's uh, actually not too bad. I could deal with two of them right there. 
So I'll probably end up just going with two of these all the way up, yeah, like that. And then, um, and then I'll just uh, tack nail those in when the, uh, when the anchors go in, that'll suck that in. So I'm gonna clean this up using this. So I just wanted to kinda show you the different products that you can use to try to get your wall nice and straight. Uh, my, this, the, the philosophy is, is that by starting off with nice square studs and everything, when you go to everything else will work out much easier afterwards by starting off with a, with a nice uh, square template to begin with, with a nice straight edge going across and not everything all wavy and bumpy. Okay, I got the back wall where I wanted it to be and I ended up, as you can see, adding uh, that one, that one, and I had, even though I brought that piece of wood out, it's still at the very top, I had to uh, still add in uh, some, some uh, drywall shims, which I did. So oh, I, I noticed I got a nail to sink, sink it. I mean a screw to head to sink, sink in there. Anyways, um, just wanted to show you what that looked like, but I finally got this entire back wall very, very flush. Okay, I'm working on this side, wet, what I call the wet wall right now, and I just want to show you what these metal plates look like. So here's a, uh, a metal plate installed. This is what they look like in your hand. And they're, they, they just have a couple of spikes on them there, so you can just uh, nail them in. And you'll see that when I go to put my um, wonderboard in, if there's a stray nail, I'm not going to hit that copper pipe there or down there. So anything where I want to protect something inside the wall, uh, I put these plates in. Okay, so now I'm working on this side wall right here and I need to determine how I want to handle that. And here's the problem. The problem is, is that if here, this is up against the studs, so when I put the wonder board on, it'll, it'll come down inside. Wonder board is about this thick here, which is about a half inch. So, I think it's a 7 16 So, it's just about this size. So if I was to put it down like this, it would be coming down in back of the tub here, here, and here. It'd be just like over the lip. So, the, so this, um, the way that they framed this out so they could put the tub in, they built this back wall back about I don't know five eighths of an inch to to half inch or whatever, and um, and that gap is too large because when my wonder board comes down, I want this front face to be inside the tub because this is going to be the waterproofed side and I want the, the if there's any water to come down and come down into the tub and then into the into the tub this way. So I need to build this up at least a half of an inch and then it would come down like that. So I need to uh, figure out how I want to uh, build this out a half of an inch. So what I did was is I started with a couple of blocks here and I'm going to um, put them in here. I must have cut it kind of tight. Alright. And what I'll do is I'll come down here like this and then bring this nice and tight there. And then I'll uh, I'll come off of that. I'll probably end up putting some, some drywall or something here. Uh, maybe some drywall plus some shims here in order to get myself a, a nice uh, flush uh, to, the, to, to here so when, the, uh, so when this comes down it'll come down like that that's how much it'll come into the tub so I'm gonna uh, go ahead and I got another block that's gonna go right here there so when this comes down it'll come down like that All right. so I'm going to put forth uh, some energy in order to uh, do that right now 
Okay, here's an update on my wall prep. I pretty much got all the walls prepped. I got my level, I have a, a line le uh, laser level with tripod right here. And uh, if you can see, I've got the niches installed and I got the level, the line level right at the top of the niches. So then as you can see when the line comes across, the tops of the niches are going to match. So that's, 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 uh, that's good. Um, what else? Anyways, all my wall prep is completely done. I've got some uh, tape on the ceilings with some markings to kind of tell me exactly where my where I don't want to put any nails through uh, coming through the wall. So I've got that all labeled on the ceiling. So that way, when the dirt uh, wonderboard goes up, uh, I'll be totally cool. I'm going to start here on the uh, back wall, and then I'll come over to this wall, and then I'll do the wet wall. Now on the um, on this wall over here I'm gonna end up taking out this piece of drywall because there's gonna be a lip here so what's gonna happen is, let me show you real quick what's gonna happen here is that on top of this surface, let me just zoom in on this so you can see that angle right there so right now we, we have a space that's right in here, but the Dura Rock, uh, excuse me, the Wonder Boy, is going to go over this, and it's just under a half of an inch. I think it's seven sixteenths of an inch. So it's going to come up, and I'm going to terminate it right here. Then I'm going to take the drywall, come up to here. I have to flush out to that, and then I have to feather that in, going across the wall here. Let me just uh, zoom back so you can see a little bit better. So. So I'm going to take out this section of drywall, this section of drywall, and I'll go right to the ceiling and right up to here. So this way when I go to this joint here, and I'll try to feather that in uh, to the wall as it meets over in this section. Um, maybe I'll even take out this one little piece right here and feather it right into this section right here. That would probably make sense because that's just a small little piece. So, anyways, that's where I'm at. I'm gonna the my next step with this wall here is to put insulation inside the uh, cavity uh, coming up here. I want to fill in insulation here, 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 the top right there, and down there. Actually, that down there is already done. So uh, it's uh, this section right here is where I really want to put some some insulation, and maybe this one here too depending upon how much I have. Um, you can see that like it's a I'm at a roof line right there. So right there, right there is where the exterior of the house is. So this top section here, at least at this angle, is like an exterior wall. So you definitely want to be insulated there. Um, but uh, over here it's actually adjoining the room going that way. So this is an interior wall. So uh, but you can see because of that angle right there, this top half could be a little bit right there. So I'll, I'll definitely want to make sure I insulate at least the top of that. So anyways, that's where I'm at right now. Next time you see this, it's all going to be buttoned up. The niches are in. You can see the niches. So I've got a, a dual niche over here. That's a soap, soap tray down there in the bottom. And then the soap and shampoo up at the top. And then right there is a following niche as well. I match the heights. And, but the niches are different because this one is a little bit, uh, the sizing is different. Okay, so that's it. Okay, we are all prepped. I just insulated the whole Beth wall there. Everything's set. It's ready for Dura Rock. I'm going to start in the back wall and I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. <clears throat> Each sheet comes three feet by five feet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take three of these uh, wall um, drywall shims just flatten them, uh, keep them all straight, <clears throat> flatten them out, and I'm going to put it down here, right on the uh, on the uh, bathtub, and I'm going to put the uh, the wonder board on top of that, so that'll just give me a space of uh, three sixteenths of an inch, and <clears throat> that will uh, take care of that. Now